Back in the latter half of 2023, I made the switch from standard resin to water washable. I had gone through a couple different types of resin and I felt like I had finally found the one that was good enough to stick with. I think I might just be done with the IPA and I think I might just have a new favorite resin. After about a year and a half, I am still using that resin and I'm still pretty happy with it. That resin is Anycubics ABS Like V2. And this is my belated one year update on it. If you appreciate this content, be sure to like and subscribe. And as always, any relevant links will be in the description below. I'm going to go through my prep process, printing, washing, post cure, and finally my experience with this resin and its performance. So without further ado, let's start with preparation. This particular resin has been through a few different iterations. It's been renamed a few times. So you want to make sure you're getting the water washable version. If you look on the Anycubic website, the ABS Like Resin Pro 2 is the regular version, and the ABS Like Resin V2 is the water washable version. It does say water washable on the bottle, so you want to make sure you see that before you buy it. The older version of this resin had the exact same name, it just didn't have that little water wash label. So you want to make sure you see that water wash label if you're not buying on any Cubics website. One time when I bought a few bottles of this, I did actually buy the wrong version. It's a really easy mistake to make, and I think that's why they phased it out, and they added that pro label. Uh, another thing I wanted to mention was that this comes in three different colors currently, gray, white, and black. I haven't tried the white, but I have tried the gray and the black. I prefer the gray to the black because it has a higher viscosity. The black is a little bit more like water, whereas the um, gray is a little bit more like oil. And personally, I don't really prefer a low viscosity resin. It splashes easier, it drips easier. It's just a lot easier to make a mess when you're using it. It also separates more quickly, which means you're gonna have to stir it up more frequently if you leave the resin in the vat, like I do. I also wanted to mention that uh, this is low odor, but it should still be treated with care. Aside from being water washable, it's exactly the same as a regular resin. So be sure to use protective equipment and handle it with care. I'll talk more about this in the post cure section. If you're new to 3D printing, you may or may not know that you can get the manufacturer's settings on their website for just about any resin and printer combo. And that'll give you some good baseline parameters for your print. For this resin, I like to keep the room temperature at 60 degrees Fahrenheit or higher. At lower temperatures, you might start to have issues. On my initial video, one thing I got a lot of comments about was how this resin clings to the plate. To combat that, you can start with the manufacturer's settings and just lower the burn-in time until it doesn't stick quite as much. Uh, you definitely want to use a sharp scraper if you aren't. I use my scraper with the beveled side down. But yeah, it does cling pretty aggressively for me too. And I've pretty much gotten used to it. Kind of going hand in hand with that. When I'm putting my files together in Lychee Slicer, I make sure that all the pieces are kind of overlapping each other a little bit. So it's just one big piece on the plate. That way I only have to scrape off one piece. And it usually comes off without too much effort. You can also fit a lot more on the plate if you do it that way. For the water washing process, I use pickle jar containers. These have baskets that sit inside them and you can pull them up and shake the water off. These work pretty well. I use one for an initial wash to get the bulk of the resin off. And then the second one is just to get hopefully everything that's left over. I don't have like an exact ratio for when I change the water out. Generally, when it's so cloudy that I can't see what's inside the basket and um, the smell will get pretty strong, that's when I change the water out on the first container and then I'll pour the water from the other container into that one and put some fresh water in the second container. And uh, that works pretty well for me. I do think that water alone is enough to clean these prints off. When I was using the black resin, I did notice that there was a bit of a gray film on it that the water would not remove. I can't really say for sure if that's on the gray as well because it would be invisible. But after washing my prints, I pad them dry with a paper towel and that usually removes a good portion of that film. I can't say that it really makes a noticeable difference in the end product if there's a bit of that film on there. It's a really minor thing, and uh, if you use the gray resin, you probably won't even notice it. But it is something that I had to deal with when I was using the black version. By the way, I cure my models for one minute, then I flip them and cure them for another minute. Then I go in with a snake light and cure any hollowed portions. I recently posted a video on prepping and curing hollowed models. It has a lot of good information in it. If you're new to 3D printing, I think it's worth checking out. For the post-cure process, 
You want to make sure that uh, when you are disposing this water, you're doing it in an eco-friendly way. For me, I put my water in a bin outside. You want to use a decent sized container for this and uh, make some sort of cage for it so that uh, critters can't get in there. And you also want to make sure that you have a space to put it where it's not going to get rained on or blown over by the wind. I have mine sitting right outside of my garage door. The water does evaporate over time and um, sometimes the bin will be bone dry and other times it'll be almost completely full. It really depends how much I'm printing at any given time. Obviously it freezes in the winter and so that kind of slows down the evaporation process and in the summer it evaporates pretty quick. A lot of it depends on your weather and your location, if this is going to work for you. I've also heard you can take this stuff to a wastewater facility, if you have one of those available. Just don't pour the wastewater down the drain. If you have no way to deal with it, then uh, maybe 3D printing isn't for you. But honestly, it's not that hard to set up a container outside. The smell can be pretty strong, so you also want to make sure that it's, it's not near like a window or anything. I have read online that some people have had issues with ABS resin cracking. Me personally, I can't say I've had a single incident where anything I've printed has cracked, and some of my prints with this resin are two years old now. I have had some minor issues with bowing. This will happen maybe like a day or two after the resin has been cured. Usually it's really minor stuff that you would like hardly even notice, like if uh, a model has like a, an open leg stance, maybe the legs will be a little bit wider or the arms will stretch out a little more or something like that. It's more of an issue on thinner pieces, like sometimes maybe like the tip of a gun will kind of bend upward a little bit. There's really not much you can do about that other than just kind of pick and choose what you're printing. If you're working with hollowed models, make sure everything is supported well enough and the walls aren't too thin. Otherwise, it could be an issue. The bowing has been a really minor problem and um, it's not nearly enough of an issue for me to uh, try other resins to see if there's a better one out there. For this last portion, I just want to talk a little bit about my experience with the resin. Under product features, it says that it's high strength and high toughness, low odor and impact resistant. Overall, I would say those things are all true. I've had quite a few occasions where I've dropped a miniature on the floor and it hasn't broken at all. Worst case scenario, maybe it'll break off a sword or a tail. It broke. The tip broke off. But a lot of the time, unless it's on a concrete floor, it doesn't even break at all. It's pretty good. It does have a little bit of flexibility, which I like. Post-cure, it doesn't really shrink much. But like I was saying earlier, it does tend to warp. Depending on what you're printing, that can be an issue. As far as limitations, this is not a highly rigid resin. It's not the type of resin you would want to use for engineering parts or prototypes, but for miniatures, it works pretty well. Larger models usually end up getting distorted on the support side during the printing process. A little sanding can help fix that and just making sure you're positioning the model in a way where it's not going to be too noticeable. That distortion has been a pretty regular thing. If I had to pick one, I would say that's probably my biggest issue with this resin, that it does get a little distorted on the support side. Other than that, uh, yeah, I'm still pretty happy with it. Uh, I, have, I don't have any plans to uh, try out other resins. If you haven't already, definitely give water washing resin a try. If not this one, another one, uh, it's definitely worth switching to. It's just so much more manageable than standard resin, in my opinion. For the home hobbyist printing miniatures, I think it's the way to go. Yeah, that's it for now. I hope you guys appreciated this video. This video is brought to you by my patrons. If you want to help support this channel, Patreon membership is of course a great way to do that. I also have affiliate links in the description if you want to check those out. Thanks as always to my patrons for the support, and thank you for watching. I'll see you later.